So, and if you have a green dog, don't take them off leash like I just did Alyssa. Alyssa's a daycare training client here. Ta-da! Her neck looks a lot bigger than that. But that's because of all that fur. So you take your dog and your fitting collar, you put them on your left, you sit on the leash, the loops over on your right hand side, you have just enough slack on the leash so that the dog can lie down. And like I said, it's been well over six months since we've done this with Alyssa, probably more than that. You need to be doing something else. Right now I'm going to look out at the woods, enjoy the birds singing. And at the point that your dog does it down, then you can start timing it for half an hour. Your dog can get up and down during that time. The purpose of this exercise is to show them how to self, my husband's putting together a long hole over there, to show them how to self chill. So we want Alyssa to make this decision for herself. I forgot, usually at the beginning I'll have a stopwatch on. And for my client's sake, I will time how long it takes them to go down the first time. That way they'll know approximately how many uh, minutes they need to wait. With Alyssa, I'm not so worried that my dogs are such a distraction to her. With other dogs, um, you'll want to start out in the least distracting, in a less distracting situation. If you only have so much time to spare exercise multiple times a day too. There's no overdo, you know, unless you're really crazy, there's no overdoing this exercise. It's excellent for puppies and um, dogs that need to learn how to chill out. Alyssa just went into a sit, but that's not what we're waiting for. We're waiting to, for her to go into a full down. Now some puppies uh, at this point will be screaming at the end of the leash, turning, uh, they might be parring you. Um, I'll upload a part of Sadie's video that we just took where she likes to boss her owner around with a paw poking or nose poking. Some will try to climb up on your lap. Some will bump your hand. And you notice I don't give Alyssa a command. I don't talk to her during this. This isn't really her training session, but it's a good dog to show uh, owner that you need to be patient and not interact with the dog in order for this to happen for you. So this is an excellent time for owner to read a book, to drink their coffee, to even eat their breakfast at the table. Um, if you fed your dog at the table before, be, expect to be at the table for a long time because they're going to be trying to get up and get the food. If you haven't fed your dog at the table before, they're going to be a little annoying, but it's going to take less time. And I don't wait, uh, Alyssa did play this morning, but I won't wait for a dog to play or anything before doing this exercise. The other thing about this exercise is that you can um, use this before you do long line work and replace the crate time. If you're doing it properly, you're creating your dog um, between one and two hours. I think uh, the book that I use says two hours actually. And the, the great thing about using this quiet time with the dog is not only does it give your, you a break from your dog, I mean, if you've ever brought up a puppy, you need a break sometimes. But um, it also teaches your dog how to be crate trained. And it's, that's something a lot of owners neglect. And when they go away on vacation, um, depending on where their dog's staying or if they're coming with them and they need to be crated in the hotel room or they go to the veterinarian's office, it makes it a lot harder on the dog than it really needs to be. You want the crate to be a nice, uh, quiet, restful place for your dog where they hang out and feel comfortable. And if you wait until the dog's older and they've never been crated, it's not going to be that for them.
Okay, it's been 10 minutes and 30 seconds, and this is where you would start uh, your clock for 30 minutes. 